Ethiopia is working to become Africa's biggest manufacturing hub in about a decade's time. The country's investment commission says a plan that started out as a hub for light manufacturing plants has grown into one of the leading manufacturing projects on the continent. CGTN's Gurum Chala has asked the commission's Fitsu Marega why industrialization is touted as the path towards the national economic transformation of Ethiopia. The focus of uh, my book is on Africa's economic uh, transformation and uh, it presents Ethiopia as a symbol of uh, African Renaissance. And uh, in this context, the book bases that the private sector is the engine of growth. Uh, it's the private sector that builds the manufacturing sector. But uh, from conceptual point of view or also from empirical evidence, the fastest uh, growing economies and countries that succeeded in terms of uh, catch up in economic transformation were those where the state played an active role. The state has to play active role in many ways, not only setting policies, setting the vision and mobilization of the whole uh, society for this purpose, but it also needs to make specific intervention in different areas, not only to fill market uh, failure uh, gaps, but also to create strategic competence. One key segment is uh, transforming Africa's economy. Industrialization, again, has been given uh, a lot of uh, focus here. So uh, based on Ethiopia's experience and Ethiopia's current success, what can be learned by African states uh, in this regard? Yeah, the first clear message is that uh, Every African country must find its own development path suitable to its peculiar condition. It must have a clear vision, a clear strategy, and also uh, policy directions. Uh, because without a vision, without the uh, strategy and policies, uh, it's not possible to sustain growth or even to uh, record uh, growth. So the key issue is, this is linked with a strategy. Every African country should primarily focus, from my point of view, on productive sectors. Even if they do have resources, they have to use investing in infrastructure. You, they have to use these resources for investing in infrastructure, on human skills, on knowledge, and, and as well as to create dynamics in manufacturing sector. What Ethiopia tried to do was this. Currently, the Chinese government is planning to introduce a new initiative. This time, it's a global initiative incorporating many states. Uh, if my memory serves me well, it's about 60 countries with 40 billion US dollars uh, initial uh, uh, investment plan. Now, with Ethiopia's current uh, plan of industrialization, the journey, how can this One Belt, One Road initiative be a, a vital instrument and what do you think about the overall initiative of Belt and Road? It's uh, based on the historical experience centuries back which will help to easily uh, capture the content of this partnership. It also shows the mutual benefits that Asia and uh, Europe and Africa can, can build on. Having said this, I would like to highlight two important issues as well. We would like the one built, I mean the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, to give a special focus to South-to-South -South relationship. Uh, if the Belt and Road Initiative focuses on China-Europe relationship and neglects the continent, African continent, I believe in the long term this will have uh, uh, the advantages and the returns will be limited. 